Hello everyone. All right, this is Corey Dowds of Eye of the Veda. Now I'm going to talk about Jupiter and K2 conjunctions. K2 is the name for the south node. Um, it's the points of where the eclipses happen are called K2 and Rahu in Vedic astrology. Now, right at this time that I'm making this video, I think it's like April 5th. Let me check. April 6th. April 6th, 2020. Um, we have Jupiter and K2, and they're in the same sign right now. So they're considered to be conjunct in what in Vedic astrology. In Western, they don't think of a conjunction until it's very close in orb. But in Vedic astrology, when a planet is in the same sign as another planet, they're considered to be conjunct, at least for certain techniques. It doesn't mean that we don't use those orbs for other things like prajna. But basically, it's kind of thought of as when you are in a room, like if, if you were in the room with me right now, you would hear me talking, you would see me, we'd be interacting, even if you were over there by the kitchen, like I have a big living room, you know, or if you're over at the foot of the door or in the corner, you know, you still might not hear every little thing, you know, and feel my qualities quite as much, but you're still going to interact with me and be a part of me. So even though K2 is at like two or three degrees of Capricorn and Jupiter is at 26 or 25 Capricorn, they're still conjunct. But earlier in the year, this was like really, really strong, okay? And the eclipse happened, Jupiter was right there with it and all this stuff. So I, I think this is a really good time to talk about Jupiter K2. <clears throat> so I'm going to start and talk a little bit about Jupiter and K2 and then we're going to put them together. It's going to make a lot of sense for you guys. So I'm going to walk you through it. So basically... Jupiter, his name is Guru in Sanskrit, He's which means heavy. The word Guru means heavy. So Jupiter symbolizes anything or anyone that is heavier in experience or in a thing than you are. Um, someone who's been fishing their whole life would be a fishing Guru to me because I don't do fishing. Um, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> so there's really no ego to the term Guru. You know, it's, it's only what we add to it. Um, anyways. Uh, there are different types of gurus, there are teachers, there are three different types, just so you know. So uh, this term is can be used kind of loosely. There's the sat guru, the true teacher, then there's the one who can help you awaken and get you there. Then there's the ones who just kind of guide you along the way and share something, like maybe what um, you do for people at times. So Jupiter has to do with like... Uh, guides and gurus and teachers of all sorts and it has to do with like our institutions and it has to do with um it has to do with how we find the answers to things you know so it even has to do with like our education and our schooling and the culture that we're born into and the religion and things that we're born into can even have to do with jupiter um and jupiter is really a planet that is about like letting goodness flow through you and creating and just <clears throat> that joy of creation, you know, that singing the song. Um, the word joy literally comes from Jupiter. Uh, Jove was the ancient Roman name. When people say, by Jove, he did it. You know, they're saying, by Jupiter, he did it. By Jupiter's grace. Um, jovial, to be joyful. All these things come from the word Jupiter. Also, fun fact, the word Jupiter itself um, is etym etymologically it comes from Diospiter, which literally would in Sanskrit mean sky father. Yeah, so that's kind of cool because Jupiter rules the ether, the akash element, the sky element. So we can see a direct Indo European Sanskrit word connection to the word Jupiter um, in the Western traditions and coming from Sanskrit um, or Indo European. Um, <clears throat> So K2 now is an eclipser. You know, K2 is this thing that's very, very spiritual. It's very internal. It kind of hides things. But it's, it's where we're very, very sincere at. You know, in the mythology, Rahu is said to be the head of this demon. Um, and it's always trying to eat the moon or the sun. And I'm getting a lot of text messages here. Let me silence my phone. Um, so basically... Uh, Rahu is, um, okay, so K2 is this planet that is an eclipse planet. It hides things. It, it cuts things away. 
Rahu is the other ha half of it, and they are kind of similar. Rahu is just a head, symbolically a head without a body. So it's just like eating and eating. It, it tries to eat the moon, and then the moon just falls out because it has no body to digest. So where Rahu's at, we're kind of hollow, or we don't follow through enough. Where Ketu's at, we're just a, he a, a body without a head. We cannot express it. We cannot show it. We can't get that ego validation for it, but we're actually very sincere about it in our heart. So Jupiter K2 means one's very, very sincere and focused on doing good or on being heavy or on being big and, you know, being a guru or on guiding others and education. And um, so this can be a good thing. It can make one want to do a lot of good in the world. But then when K2 is there, it usually means one has been doing this thing to too much of an extent and they need to switch gears. And you have to go and learn to do what Rahu's doing. And so <clears throat> this Jupiter K2 placement can actually be very tricky if you see charts of people who aren't working on their Rahu or going to that. Then you'll see some really uh, wild situations happening. K2 um, is where we have a lot of expectations on and we can be kind of uptight there and kind of pushy there. So on the one hand, Jupiter is heaviness and is guru or heavy and big. So these people oftentimes are always being too pushy with their their influence or they're always trying to push their weight around too much. Um, this is really, really true. Like uh, I can think of one person who was like a student and had Jupiter K2 and you know, uh, I invited them to this conference and I was like, you should go to this and just meet all these people network. It'll be amazing. And they were like, I won't go unless I'm a teacher there. Like unless I'm con, you know, and they had just started. They were like, like I wasn't even going to be a teacher at this conference and they were my student and they had like just been in this world for like three or four years at this time. So it was like super, so much audacity. Like for me, I was like, wow, I wish I had the audacity to even assume or expect that I would be invited to this as a teacher. It's like, what? <laughs> you know? Um, but anyway, so they'll then they kind of ruin their opportunity to go there and be a student network. And the next year, they probably would have been a teacher because they're so apt and so skilled. But they didn't because they pushed too hard. And they pushed their weight around too much. So um, this happens a lot with this placement. These people will be overly optimistic, overly hopeful, and just expect things are going to work out fine, and then they do not. Um, one thing that can happen early on, because K2 and Rahu have to do with our ancestral karma, so it means that Jupiter could like, there can be a re very religious ancestral karma that you have. You could have been a priest or a preacher or a person who had, like, was very, very pushy with your religion and beliefs. And so then you are born into a family with parents like that. And they really stifle you. That's very common with displacement. Um, they can tend to have like a crisis with their religion that they're brought up into, you know, um, or with their guru or with uh, something about that, with their education, even with their universities, with their professors. Um, and like after that, they kind of have this break from their Jupiter side, the belief philosophy side. They kind of learn that they don't need to have such a perfect ideal path or vision or teacher. And, um, they sort of stop trying to be so heavy usually after that, or it's like a lesson in that. But these people just generally always need to have a, a lesson of learning to lighten up um, in some ways, you know? Um, and it can always, of course, depend on where Rahu's at, the rest of it. Um, they need to lighten up about their spiritual growth too. These are the types of people, I know another person has this who spent like, you know, more than a, a decade or two in like, a super strict religious guru tradition and like wouldn't do anything fun and just didn't feel like they grew at all from it. Another person that has Jupiter Rahu or some other place that might do amazing and that's what they're for. But you get this Jupiter K2 conjunction and wanting to be Jupiter, you see, wanting to do good fails them. You know what I mean? And that's literally what happens is doing good fails the person in the end. Um, and then that can be a real problem. Um, and the other thing is that they can disrespect other people's destinies or their paths and their dharmas, and they will just disrespect those um, and yet be fanatical about their own dharma and destiny in a way that's like, Ugh, you know what I mean? Um, so very rigid, can be too pushy, um, cannot like settle for anything but the most perfect 
you know, thing or the most ideal thing. For women, they'll be like way too uptight sometimes about the perfect man, you know, or something, or way too uptight about their man, wanting things to be too ideal. Um, it's actually like, in my opinion, and my, based on the research I've done, I'm going to show a lot of examples of this. Um, it's a really great supervillain placement. Um, if you were to be a supervillain, this would be the great placement to have. <laughs> if you think about what I'm saying, you'll understand why. It's another another way to put it is like, like that saying, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. That's very true for this placement. Um, so you can try so hard to be good that you end up being bad and really messing up the world. See Adolf Hitler, who has Jupiter K2 conjunct in Capricorn, where it's debilitated. Where is that right now? We're going to look at that in a little bit. Um... So these people need to learn to be a little more practical and just have like a slower progression, not want everything to be so perfect, not want to have like the most perfect culture or guru or religion. Um, they just need to, their culture, their guru, their guide, they just needs to be a little bit better than them. That's really it. They don't need to be enlightened or any of this stuff. They just need to be a little bit better than them and they need to follow their advice and then they'll get a little bit better. Um, and then over a few more lives or keep working on this, then you'll get the ideal guru, you know? Um... But they tend to be, get very disappointed in teachers and astrologers. Typically, the people that get readings from me, some of the only people that I feel kind of like I didn't maybe satisfy them that much or that they feel really stuck is a Jupiter K2. Oh, great. That's another great example. I had a person who I did a reading for like a year ago, and I took way too long to do their reading. Oh, wow. This, it maybe wasn't a good reading, whatever. She, But this was like a year ago. She didn't tell me it was a bad reading until just now, like a month ago when Jupiter's with Cajun. She was like, I just want you to know I was really disappointed or kind of let down by my reading. And I was like, that's interesting, you know. Um, I don't know. So I don't think that I, I do my best. I've done like thousands of amazing readings. So if I do a few that don't make people happy, that's just that. Um, but they'll usually have the Jupiter K2 placement where um, – and then the, what they'll share with me is like, I can just tell from interacting with them that there's no there's no relaxation of their Jupiter energy. So of course, when they go to a Jupiter, there will be I won't be able to relax. I won't be able to see it. I won't be able to enjoy it, and it's just going to be a uh, kind of feeling. Um, so if you have this, you want to be not so uptight about your teachers, your gurus, about demanding answers, any of that stuff. Do not be like that. Um, try to actually just start practicing what you preach tone it down, <laughs> tone down the idealism, um, just do what you can day by day to do well. Um, but these people can also have major crises, same with Jupiter Rahu, major crises with a Jupiter theme for a woman that could be husband, uh, for other people could be, or a woman still could be child, um, could be your teacher, your education, your wealth. Um, And, uh, you know, depending on a lot of the things like, um, like Steve Jobs had this placement and he had an exalted Jupiter, so it was a pretty good placement, but still like he, uh, he tried to get onto a raw food fast, uh, cause he was trying to be so good about healing himself, but it was like too late for his cancer and it made it even way worse and exaggerated it. And um, he was very too pushy, like everything I was just saying, like Steve Jobs was criticized for, even though he had amazing ideals, very spiritual, he was a yogi, he read autobiography of a yogi every year of his life, you know, he was just obsessed with Yogananda, um, a fellow Kriyaban. So I respect him a lot, but he was, um, he was just, he, he was very too pushy with his power and his influence. There's a very funny story once where, they were making the iPhone. He just decided we were going to make an iPhone. Like they didn't have the technology to do it at that time. And he was just like, we're doing it, which was very Jupiter K2 idealistic. And, you know, um, once when the scientists were like, we can't get it any smaller than this, he grabbed the phone and he threw it in a like a little aquarium or a little fish pond tank. And he was like, see those bubbles coming out? There's air in it. You can make it smaller. <laughs> So that's pretty intense, um, but you can show his genius and his idealism. So when it's exalted and when you have good yogas in your chart, you can do a lot with this, but you can still be a, an interesting personality, let's put it that way. But you want to do it that way rather than just like, you know, 
other situations with Jupiter K2, what's really afflicted, you can be born into a, um, like a religion or a family and that sort of Jupiter thing breaks for you and then they just give up on life and they feel like nothing is good, there's no God, there's nothing good to do and they just have wounded their Jupiter and not tried to heal it, you know? Um, yeah, that's pretty much just about the gist of it. Um, with women, it can be a little bit more about being uptight about having children and uptight with their husband because Jupiter rules that. Now we will go into some examples of, uh, of this to, to kind of flesh it out. And you'll see a lot of powerful people with this placement that have it. And um, you'll see why it's kind of a super villain placement. <laughs> All right, take care. All right, so this is probably one of the... <clears throat> one of the most prominent examples of the Jupiter K2 supervillain placement, trying to do good, but really ruining the world in the, in the course of doing it, or the road to hell is paid with good intentions sort of idea. See, all villains think they're doing good, but they're, you know, doing it from a twisted perspective. So K2, Rahu, they can twist and warp and distort things, and so Jupiter is good. So when Jupiter and K2 are, twi are together, it's more easy for us to get confused about what's good, twist up what's good. Doing good can basically fail us in the end. And so Adolf Hitler was someone who, you know, he was a good leader, whatever. He was, he was good for Germany and all this stuff, but then he took it too far. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as, as Norm MacDonald put it, he, you know, Germany was doing great. And then they decided they would go to war. And who did they choose as their enemy? the world <laughs> and then they tried to go to war again with the world <laughs> anyways just funny joke there uh check out that norm mcdonald bits considered to be one of the funniest bits of all time um okay so basically adolf hitler really good example of this some of these other ones will be a little bit less clear for us. Um, this is the chart of uh, Jennifer Aniston. This one's not as noticeable maybe, but she was a really good girl. And um, then she, after her breakup with Brad Pitt, she didn't, it seems, seems like something happened in her own life where she started playing a lot of the bad girl characters, where she started playing the, the crazy, crazy bitch or the kind of like, you know, all these sorts of Jupiter K2 characters were doing good was failing them and they were just going wild um, or something like that. So that's kind of an interesting one as well. Steve Jobs, this guy had an exalted Jupiter and in a good house, so he did pretty well with it, but he was an extremely idealistic person to the point where his ideals became, you know, pathological or toxic or too intense. Um, and so he was a very spiritual person. He's actually a brother Kriya Yoga initiate of mine. And um, he was obsessed with Yogananda. And he only had one book on his iPad. It, the creator of the iPad only had one book. And it was Autobiography of a Yogi. Um, but he was too pushy about that. Um, he gave out a copy of Autobiography of a Yogi to every single person who went to his funeral. Um, which I think is cool. I don't think that's being too pushy. But then in other areas, it's like, he just claimed we were going to make the iPhone. He didn't, it wasn't possible at that time. He was just like, we're doing it. And he told the world. And so then his, his you know, tech people had to come up with it. And they gave him a phone. And he was like, this is not small enough. Uh, you know, you need to make it smaller. And they're like, that's not possible. He grabbed the phone. He went and dropped it into an aquarium or a fish tank right next to it. And he saw bubbles coming. I was like, see those bubbles? That's air it can be smaller. <laughs> so he's pretty psycho, kind of like a supervillain, kind of like my, maniacal. But, um, but he also did do a lot of good with that because um, that Jupiter was exalted sometimes. <laughs> so this is just another interesting example of how um, this guy, Jupiter, uh, Edward Snowden, his guides, his, uh, his culture he was born into was not very supportive of him. You know, they turned around and said, you're a traitor. You know what I mean? They, he went and did the right thing for the whole country, which truly was the right thing to do. And then the government shamed him and they, you know, got mad at him. And, and uh, the sun with Rahu, with Mercury, sun is shaming Mercury. If you watched my Mercury ashamed videos that I did just recently, Mars is also shaming it. Sun is the government. 
Mars is the military. They made him feel ashamed of his himself, his Mercury, his speech, his what he what he asserted. <clears throat> so Jupiter K2 can be a very tricky placement. This is the chart of Prabhupada. Prabhupada is a, uh, a very huge spiritual teacher who was a big part of the Hare Krishna movement. And, you know, I love all Vedanta, and so I love the Hare Krishna movement as well. Um, but in general, he is considered, he's kind of criticized as a guru who is much more like preachy, more dogma oriented, more like kind of like hard hitting, <clears throat> rather than being like soft and loving with the bhakti of Krishna and love and all. So that's kind of interesting because he has that Jupiter K2 conjunction. Um, and it's in Leo. Um, so that's interesting as well. Here's the chart of Herbert Hoover. Herbert Hoover was a president who was supposed to like <clears throat> fix our economy and stuff, but he, he, he did not And he failed to, he was kind of considered to have failed to like um, fix certain things with our government and our debt and our spending and all. And, you know, Jupiter and K2 is there in the sixth house of debts um, <clears throat> and like overspending and stuff like that. So he probably wasn't the best person to manage all that. And then K2's Lord Venus is debilitated in the sixth cusp again. So doo -doo -doo. let's look at another example real quick. <clears throat> Now, this is the chart of Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson uh, is like a real freak musician guy who's like, looks like death, you know what I mean? And he's got all this crazy makeup and puts in like different contacts, look like his eyes aren't even his own eyes and like dead eyes and all this weird stuff. Mm, he really freaked me out as a kid when I saw his music video. And so I've never been interested in this guy at all. Um, but so I... I don't hate him or anything and I don't dis I don't disagree with him because I mean, he's a very intelligent guy and I've heard his interviews and I've heard him speak. He actually is a very intelligent guy. He's not, he's the kind of guy that like a lot of that's just a show for him. And I think it was therapeutic for him. And you can see with that Rahu and Saturn, Oh man, there is some heavy darkness or, or stuff he has to work out in this life. And it's on the ninth cusp. And, um, <clears throat> The ninth cause has to do with your culture and your beliefs and what you're brought up with your parents and stuff. So Jupiter K2, again, doing good failed him. You know what I mean? So Marilyn Manson is not someone known for doing good. <laughs> and again, this Jupiter K2 conjunction. Seems like he worked with it the best he could considering all the circumstances. <clears throat> Here's a chart of Cecil Rhodes. This is the guy where we actually get the term the Rhodes Scholar from. This is where we get the term um, Rhodesia. This is the guy who went down to South Africa. He initially was sent down there because he had bad health problems and they thought that changing environment would be good for him. Funny because he has a Gemini placement for traveling and living abroad in foreign lands. Tell me if you can see it because it's, you know, if you know your Gemini, you should be able to see it here. <clears throat> now, he, uh, K2 Jupiter, again, um, he basically did do good at first kind of like Hitler, but then he ended up getting more and more. It wasn't enough money. It wasn't enough wealth. What is enough diamonds? He, he first owned some of the diamond mines. He ended up buying up all the diamond mines of South Africa. And this guy is basically the reason that rich white people have all those diamonds and black people don't, even though they grew up in their family and everyone, you know, they were, it was their land. Anyways, um, he was basically a white supremacist kind of, you know, he kind of just believed that like his, you know, like, race everything he was just right you know that's the thing is k2 jupiter makes you think you're right too much makes you have that preachy kind of rightness like i'm above others and you're preachy and you have dogma funny how he had mars and rahu conjunct saying actually you're in this life to be tested as to whether you are truly moral are you truly moral are you truly ethical do you really know it's right and are you going to stand up and fight for it and assert yourself or are you going to find cheating ways through throughout, you know, find your way to cheat it, basically to create, uh, you know, shady contracts and things like that. He had a lot of deals and contracts that where he basically screwed over people um, like natives and Africans and indigenous people. So you can kind of see that because he, from that ugly starred Mars with Rahu there. Um, yeah, so this is an inter a very interesting guy where Jupiter K2 conjunctions Doing good fails them in the end. 
<clears throat> and they become a super villain sometimes. <laughs> um, another interesting thing about this is that the Rhodes Scholar is an educational term in K2 Jupiter. You know, this comes from Cecil Rhodes, this guy, and he had a K2 Jupiter placement. And um, he had an ingestion nakshatra, which is a very like paranoid, you know, overruling kind of nakshatra ruled by Indra, the king. So these are very um, oftentimes like tycoons or kings or big high figures will be like that. And then they'll be, they'll be very paranoid and be always, you know, trying to manipulate and, you know, they're afraid of being taken down because when you're at the top, it's, there's nowhere else to go but down. Um, so that was involved in his life as well. And yeah, this is just a good example of Jupiter K2. Um, make sure you do your Rahu Dharma. If you have this and you're watching this video, it's okay. Keep, you know, using that Jupiter for good. Just make sure you're using the Rahu energy and working through that to do embrace your Rahu Dharma. And don't take any shortcuts. <clears throat> and how can you know if you're not doing well with it? Well, do you feel like you're being too fanatical? Do people ever tell you you're too fanatical? or you're too into your own beliefs or whatever, or you're putting yourself above others, you know what I mean? Or you're not practicing what you're preaching. Um, you know, these are the kind of themes that you're gonna, gonna um, find for a lot of people when the Jupiter K2 is not working well. Um, lots of other people I could, could have done for examples. Henry VIII, really good example. Um, Obama had this really good example because Obama didn't really do anything. Like I was so hyped. Everybody was so hyped on Obama. We were all so, and we were just like, yes, finally, we can be proud of someone. Oh, he actually killed more people in drone strikes than, than so he killed more civilians in drone strikes. He won a Nobel Peace Prize in like the first three months of being inaugurated. Like he hadn't done anything. He, they literally gave him a Nobel Peace Prize for like being elected a president as a black person, I guess, which is kind of not cool in a lot of ways. Like if I, I think that if you were like, no, like black people should be considered to be important and intelligent enough to merit a Nobel prize, just like all other races, not just because they got to get elected, <laughs> you know? Um, anyways, uh, Princess Diana, um, another example. Um, Alexander the Great is a really good example. L. Ron Hubbard is another really good example. The founder of Scientology, that Martin Shkreli guy who like, uh, yeah, you know, he's not even worth knowing. Um, a lot of other, a lot of other um, personal people I know and, you know, personal clients have had that have this place. So it's a very interesting thing. And this is happening now by transit. So I felt like it would be worth mentioning and talking about for you guys. Okay, I hope you enjoy that. Hario. <laughs>